Fox. We're going to take you now uh, to the news conference of New York State lawmakers in Albany. Let's now listen in. The Attorney General's task completed. The Assembly is working to expeditiously conclude our investigation, which covers a broad range of issues so that we can bring this sad chapter of our state's history to a conclusion. As I stated last week, the governor has clearly lost the confidence of the majority members of the New York State Assembly. The Attorney General's report lays out in painful detail the many instances and ways in which he reportedly harassed and created a hostile work environment for the employees of the Executive Chamber and others he came in contact with. I'm heartbroken. Let me be clear, no one should have to endure the type of behavior detailed in the Attorney General's report. We had a historic moment in our state's modern history. For the first time in more than 100 years, the Assembly's undertaking an impeachment investigation of a sitting governor. Chairman Levine, the members of the Judiciary Committee, and my majority colleagues understand the gravity of the situation that we find ourselves in today. Future generations will look to us and how we conducted ourselves in this moment. In order to ensure due process, which is embedded in our system, we've asked for all evidence unredacted and unfiltered used by the Attorney General's investigators to reach their conclusions. The process to begin receiving that information did not begin until Saturday evening. We have not yet received all of it. We've received a lot, but not all of it. We've also asked the governor to submit any relevant evidence he may have by Friday, August 13th. Our goal is now to bring this matter to a conclusion with all due haste, no pun intended. The Judiciary Committee has made progress on the issues they have been investigating. And to provide an update on those issues, our schedule and the progress of the overall investigation, I will now turn to the chair of our Judiciary Committee, Charles Levine. Thank you, Speaker. We have just completed an executive session of the Judiciary Committee to discuss the committee's ongoing impeachment investigation of Governor Cuomo. As I stated in my opening remarks before we went into executive session, the committee is closely reviewing the findings of the Attorney General's detailed report. At the same time, the Assembly's outside counsel, Davis Polk, con is continuing to conduct its own thorough, independent, and expeditious investigation. This investigation by Davis Polk covers the allegations of sexual misconduct and related retaliation documented in the Attorney General's report. It also covers other allegations, including allegations that the governor improperly used state resources to write and produce a book, American Crisis, Leadership Lessons from the COVID-19 Pandemic, and that's quote, unquote, allegations concerning COVID-19 and nursing homes, allegations that he provided for preferential access to COVID-19 testing to certain friends and or family members. As part of the committee's analysis of the sexual harassment allegations, it will review the very detailed report submitted by the Attorney General and the related evidence. The related evidence involves three volumes of, a of appendices. At the same time, the, the lawyers are reviewing over 100,000 pages of documents the testimony of numerous witnesses and alone, and this doesn't count the 100,000 plus documents, just on the nursing home question alone, there are more than half a million pages of documentation. These, so I want to address the timeline for this process. We have scheduled additional executive sessions of the committee for August the 16th and again for August 23. In these sessions, Davis Polk will update the members of the committee on its investigative findings. By then, we expect Davis Polk will have had an opportunity to 
further examine the material, the original source material that's being provided by the Attorney General's office. These presentations will incorporate the Attorney General's important and valuable work, but it will also reflect the results of Davis Polk's independent review. Beginning next week on August 16, the members of the committee will be granted access in a secure location to the full evidence of the Attorney General's investigation, as well as information that's been gathered and prepared by Davis Polk. This evidence will include all the underlying lying transcripts, recordings of witnesses' depositions, the recording of Governor Cuomo's deposition, documents and other materials. Given the sensitivity, the absolute sensitivity of this information, and in order to preserve confidentiality of the committee's investigation, as well as to protect the interests and the safety of the alleged victims, particularly those who were not identified by name in the Attorney General's report. These materials will be available only in a secure environment somewhere close to, if not in the Capitol. Next, we expect to hold public hearings after August the 23rd to present testimony from independent experts on key subject matters related to the impeachment inquiry. We expect to invite an expert to testify on sexual assault and harassment. And we expect to invite another expert to address the impeachment process itself under the New York State Constitution. After the committee has completed its review of the evidence, it will make a recommendation to the full assembly on whether to proceed with impeachment against Governor Cuomo. We anticipate that this process will be concluded very soon. Next, and when I say very soon, I'm speaking about several weeks. Next, I want to describe the opportunities that we are extending to the governor to participate in the assembly's process. Let me start by providing a brief background on impeachment. As noted, impeachment and conviction of a governor entails a two-stage process. The impeachment itself by the assembly followed by a trial in the court of impeachment. And the court of impeachment is the, the senators, minus one, so it's 62 senators, and the seven judges of the court of appeals. During the initial impeachment phase, Governor Cuomo has and will have numerous opportunities to be heard. In particular, the committee has afforded Governor Cuomo the opportunity to, to submit any and all written materials to the assembly that he would like the committee to consider, and we are expecting to receive those by Friday. Any such written materials will supplement materials that the governor has already produced. The committee will also carefully consider Governor Cuomo's 85-page position paper that his counsel released on the 3rd of August. The recorded statement that he made that very same day and the subsequent press conference held by his counsel on August the 6th and all testimony by the governor under oath. If the assembly approves articles of impeachment, Governor Cuomo will be afforded additional access to information and additional opportunities to participate during the trial phase, and the trial phase is in the court of impeachment. The committee has and will continue to conduct an investigation that is comprehensive, fair, and reflects the seriousness of our constitutional obligation. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, and I welcome any questions that you may have. Can, may I simply ask a question, um, and maybe it's because everybody's wearing masks. If you can just state, tell us your name and your affiliation, that will help. Thanks, Dan. Dan, that's a very interesting question. Um, we may very well have the authority to do that, and I wouldn't discount that for a moment. But the end result would be, because he's already out of office, 
an impeachment itself is going to be moot. It's, it's not going to be meaning, meaningful. But there would be the opportunity in the court of impeachment to prohibit him from ever again occupying statewide office. Thank you, Dan. And who are you? Andrew, hi. I want to point something out to begin with. The committee itself has zealously fought to protect the rights of every one of these women. There have been no leaks whatsoever from the Assembly Committee. And we will and have and we will continue to treat every one of the alleged victims with respect and with concern and with a sense of protection. I spent a lifetime trying complex cases in our state and our federal courts. I would not want to rely solely on the report of the Atten Attorney General, as good as it is, to make a case. And the question here isn't simply, shall we rush to impeach? The question is, can we present, should that occur, a compelling and comprehensive case at the court of impeachment? I understand and I appreciate and sympathize with the desire to do this and do this as fast as possible. But we still have to comport with constitutional mandates and requirements. And 100 years from now, 200 years from now, people will look back at this and people will say, did they do the right thing? Our intention, the intention of everyone, and this is a bipartisan statement on, uh, on the committee, is to do what is right. Thank you. Um, wait, wait, wait. No, you. All right. Wait, wait. This is almost like being home. Everybody's yelling at me. Who's going to start? Let's start over here on this side. Chairman John Campbell with the USA Today Network. You just mentioned people 100 years from now. There's only been one impeachment. That was in 1913. Are you using that as a guidebook? And is the fact that it was so long ago complicating matters at all for, for, for the impeachment process? No, it's, it's not complicating matters at all. But, um, uh, we use it to an extent to uh, uh, view past and prior uh, precedent. Uh, as everyone knows, there is no primer on how to do an impeachment. The Constitution necessarily provides great leeway, great deference to the members of the Assembly and the people who constitute the Court of Impeachment. We struggle to make sure that we provide adequate and proper and above what's required constitutional and due process protections, not only for the governor. Due process protections provide everyone. They, they provide help for the, the victims, and they also provide protection for the governor, and they provide protection for the people of the state of New York. And we will comport with due process. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, is Davis Polk advising you on the impeachment process or only on this the investigation? On both. Oh. Uh, Mr. 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 Can you explain, um, I'm Mr. sorry. I'm a reporter with the city. Um, can you explain why there needs to be public hearing on this matter? Why not just have these experts testify to the Judiciary Committee? And will there be other people allowed to testify? We anticipate that experts in the field of what happens to those who are the victims of sexual assault and experts on the subject of impeachment in New York State will testify. And the reason for that is Everyone on this committee has gotten multiple inquiries, very often, no offense, inquiries, inquiries from the press as to what is the process, what is involved. We want to make sure we do everything so that the people of the state of New York are aware of the process, and that's why we will have the public, the, this public hearing. Wait. I'm sorry? Marina Morgan. Miller with the Associated Press. I was just wondering um, what sort of coordination there's been with the AG's office. Are you anticipating 
including um, re-interviewing women who may have spoken anonymously to the AGs, uh, to the AGs report already. And I was also just wondering if you could talk about what it looks like grounds for impeachment are, you know, based on the last five months of work getting done. We'll certainly do our best to communicate with witnesses who are anonymous, but you know, of course, it's, they're, they're anonymous, so it's not so easy to figure out uh, who they are. We uh, will uh, likely uh, be, in fact, I'm sure, we will be speaking with some of the witnesses uh, who had uh, cooperated in the Attorney General's investigation, and we will be doing that very, very quickly, which is not to suggest that our counsel haven't already interviewed uh, quite a few of the witnesses. Speaker wait, wait, wait. We're going to go to Morgan. We're going to go to Morgan now. We're going to go to the middle, and then we're going to go to the, the, to the right. Thank you. Morgan McKay, News. Um, why not proceed with just the sexual harassment allegations? Why keep the investigation so broad? And one more question. Um, once articles or if articles of impeachment are introduced, uh, how long do you guys have to vote on that? Is that like within three days or that day? So, Morgan, I'm sorry, the, the, the first question was why not just proceed with the Attorney General's report? Yes. Well, we have to make sure that we examine the evidence that underlines, underlies the Attorney General's report. Um, when I look at the Attorney General's report, I'm impressed at the comprehensive and thorough nature of that report. But the conclusions as to whether there was impeachable, an impeachable offense, that's a conclusion that is within the realm and the authority only of the New York State Assembly. No one else. And bear this, I ask you to consider this. If we are going to present a case, assuming there is a trial of the impeachment in the court of impeachment, I think we owe it to the people of the state of New York to make sure that we fully examine the underlying evidence in the Attorney General's report and that we do our best to, to make sure that it correlates or interfaces with our evidence. That's basic trial. It's basic trial strategy. Well, but why keep it so broad? Why not just proceed with just the sexual harassment allegations? Why consider the, uh, the COVID-19 potential cover-up of COVID-19-related deaths in those homes and, and state resources used right in this pandemic book? Why, why keep it so broad? Morgan, um, our charge uh, from the speaker was to examine each of those separate um, uh, events. Um, I don't want to start to discuss uh, the art involved in drawing articles of impeachment yet. We've still got a couple of steps to take before we're in that position. But I'm fully, I'm fully, con I'm fully confident, thank you, that should the committee vote to pursue impeachment, the articles of impeachment will be airtight. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Wait, wait. Yes, 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 we'll come back. Mr. Speaker or Chair, have, you, have either of you heard from the governor in the past week? Has he been threatening, um, bargaining? Um, what's his approach to dealing with you as this moves forward? No, I haven't heard from the governor directly. <clears throat> I have not uh, spoken to the governor, I think, since the end of February. Um, other than discussions of, of the budget and the leaders' meeting, uh, and when I had COVID, he wished me well. But outside of that, I've had no conversations with the governor. I think for us, we know we have a job to do, and that's what we are concentrating on, fulfilling our constitutional duties when it comes to these matters. Hold on, I'm, Chuck was running the show, so I'm going to let him continue to fix. You, um, you know, there is a report out there suggesting that the governor is reaching out to state lawmakers to potentially broker a deal to avoid impeachment. Um, are you hearing anything like that? Other than what I read in the newspaper, I've had no reach out um, from the governor. Speaker, how Mr. many Chairman, votes do you procedural, have in your Mr. Chairman, procedural question. Uh, will, but, but who are I'm you? sorry, Henry Rossoff with PIX11. Thank I you, was, Henry. I was wondering if you, your committee, will draft articles and vote on them specifically recommending each individual article, or will you do a broad recommendation, then go back and do articles? How is this going to play out? I think those of us. Um, who have ever been involved in either drafting indictments or charges 
or reading and analyzing them know that until we are a little bit farther along in the process, we can't answer that, answer that question. We still, need, we still need to review some more evidence, but we, are, we have made remarkable progress. But will there be an up or down vote and then individual votes? I guess that's what I'm getting at. I think that that sounds like a good idea to me. Chair, what's Chair, the obvious? Okay, I was just asking for a follow-up because I didn't get one before. I was just wondering about what the uh, earliest date that we could see a vote is that October maybe? That there could be an impeachment vote? Or what's when, the you, when you say October for an impeachment vote on the floor of the Assembly? Yes, I was just wondering under this timeline, when's the earliest the public can expect that if you know, there is a decision to impeach when we can see a vote? We are, concent we are concentrating on completing the committee process. And once the committee process is completed, we will all be in a better position to be able to, to answer that question. Good question. Once they are voted on, is there an ability to impeach to amend those afterwards? Because there are some people who are saying, let's just have our vote on sexual harassment first, and then let's the committee complete the pro what's that more. Is that something that can happen? Or? I'd ask um, the, um, everyone who is a, sort of an armchair lawyer who is waiting in on how to draft articles of impeachment to, to consider that there are notice requirements to the governor. Once articles of impeachment are adopted by the assembly, the governor is entitled, they will be served on the governor by the court of impeachment and the governor is entitled to at least 30 days to respond, 30 days minimum for the, for the court of impeachment trial in the Senate. And I would just ask people to consider who are waiting in on this about drafting articles of uh, am amending articles to consider we probably have to then continue to give 30 days notice after every one of those amendments. And the and and. Perhaps there may just be a way to draft the article of article or articles of impeachment in such a way that they are sufficiently comprehensive. But well, wouldn't that window you would have to set aside? Like when does the, does the governor have to set aside once the assembly votes to impeach him? He does. And so in that 30 days, there, there would still be a 30 day window? There would still be a 30 day window, but now then the trial itself is postponed for another month and another month and another month. I am not so sure that's in the best interests of the people of the state of New York. Speaker Hasty, Speaker Hasty, have you heard from anyone in your Democratic conference that they do not support impeachment or resignation of the governor at this point? Um, and given that fact, again, can you talk about why the decision to hold off on this vote? So, Jimmy, um, I would say, listen, you have a wide range of, of uh, you know, uh, I'd say feelings that uh, members have, um, but I guess I guess again I'll say the overall sense that I get from the members of the assembly is the, uh, as I stated very clearly, that uh, members uh, have uh, no confidence in the ability of the governor to remain in office. I think that's the the universal sentiment that we have, and you're always going to have differences of opinion as to where and how and how quick. But as the chairman out, outlined, you know, you want to make sure things are right, but also done in an expeditious uh, manner. And, you know, I believe that this is going to be dealt with in weeks and, and, and not months. And I just want people to understand uh, you want to make sure that this is a process that no one can say uh, they were treated uh, unfairly. And I do think the, uh, for those of us uh, who are not in the press and those of us who are not members, uh, the public is watching what we're doing. And I think we have to assure the public that what we did was done in a constitutional and fair manner. Speaker Casey, Speaker Casey. who is currently running the state? I would assume the governor is. Speaker Hastie, Karina Kalfabian in here with Newstead. I was just wondering, can you tell us what the cost of the proceedings um, I don't have an up-to-date figure, but um, I think at last mention that I was given, at least on the assembly side, I believe it was in the millions of dollars. Speaker Hastie, well, well, there, there are those, some people are concerned or express concern. Um, 
cool about whether or not the, the governor is going to cut some kind of a deal to be able to this himself back. Can you give any sort of assurance I, that I'm he not, will not be able to cut a deal? I am not happen? negotiating any deals. Like I said, I read that in the newspaper. I'm not part of any discussions or plan to be part of any discussions about cutting deals. Of course, I'm concerned about everybody. I'm concerned about the the uh, the victims. I'm concerned about the people that stayed in New York. This is not something that I take, uh, you know, very lightly. Um, but you know, the attorney general's investigation was, you know, was five months. Uh, almost five months long, and what I'm saying is, and, and what the chair and the committee is saying is, there still is a, a role that the assembly has to play, and I'm just asking people to understand that and let us do what is right. Uh, I think it's been ve made very, very clearly by this assembly majority that there's no confidence in the governor remaining in office, but we still have to uh, deal with the, the, the process that lets the people of the state of New York know that we did things in the right way. Mark, I'm sorry, can you speak up a, a, a little more? Sure. Is there a higher level of a burden of proof in the, for the committee than what the Attorney General had in her report, where it basically was a he said, she said, but there was very, there wasn't quite corroborating evidence, such as, you know, you had this uh, woman who came forward who said she took selfies, but without having a date stamp or a time stamp. I mean, is there other, uh, is there a higher burden of proof for the assembly to make? Mark, um, I learned during the years I served as chair of the Ethics Committee, which was in a period of intense turmoil. I don't use the phrase, he said, she said, and I will not, although you forced me to, to use it. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that any more than I believe that if someone's walking down the street, if you're walking down the street and someone comes and hits you on the head, your word should be considered, even if there's no witnesses. Plus, um, and in addition to that, or as some of my colleagues like to say now, plus one, let me plus one you that. Uh, I have read every word of that report, and I would um, not agree with the characteriz characterization that there was not corroboration. Whether that corroboration is sufficient to justify the assembly voting or the committee voting uh, to impeach, that remains to be seen. I hope that answers your question. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to this side now. Are the police for the New York Times, are the outside lawyers going to present their findings? sort of final report or through the public hearings themselves. And the governor's lawyers have called the AG investigation biased. They said they said that he was treated unfairly, they raised process uh, issues with the process. Does anyone in the committee or yourself share any of uh, the governor's concerns about how the investigation is carried out? I think the best answer to that question is this. Uh, the report itself is comprehensive. It is artfully drafted and written, but the committee is less concerned, in fact, hardly concerned at all with its findings than it is with conducting an independent evaluation of the factual, the factual basis. And I, I really don't want to comment on the governor's uh, characterization of the attorney general or the lawyers uh, who, who did that report. Uh, the attorney general is uh, highly respected, and the attorneys who prepared that report are also highly respected. On the first question, on the first question, on the first question, will your outside lawyers present their findings in some sort of written report? Of course. Of course. Mr. Chairman, Mike Michael. Most of the, the legislators and, and other officials who have been forced out of office were, were accused of felonies. The Constitution for the uh, impeachment seems to talk about losing public trust. Can there be articles of impeachment that don't include a felony, maybe not even a misdemeanor, no crime at all? 
I think the answer to that question is yes. And I think if we look to Article 13, Section 5 of the New York State Constitution, the word, and I'm sure it's a word that all of us are familiar with, is uh, malversation. M-A-L-V-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N is sufficient reason for, uh, for removal from office. Malversation, in essence, it means today we would say corruption, corruption of office. Well, the follow-up would be that this, to the accusation that you've seen that just a sexual harassment, would that constitute corruption? It's, it could, yes. Corruption of office means more than simply being on the take for a few bucks here or a few bucks there. Mr. Is there any worry that looking at the timelines of this, that the longer this goes, the more that the governor would be able to stay in power and like the United States in some way? The second question is, can you talk a little bit about how much support the Assembly has for this goal already, for the going into this? Well, it's, time may inure to the benefit of the governor. It may not. As far as we are concerned, when we talk about time, we are talking about finishing this process within a matter of weeks. I can't speak to the assembly as a whole, but I, but, I could, but I could say this, and I will say this, on behalf of the Republican and the Democratic members of the Judiciary Committee. We have examined everything we can up to this date. Every person on this committee, which I'm privileged, thank you, to be able to lead, is as serious as can be. And I'm also conscious of something else, which is that so many have been the victims of sexual assault. And many of those people have had intense and anxious reactions as a result of this accusation against the governor. It is in the best interests of the people of the state of New York to move expeditiously, which is what we have been doing. We are now six days after the Attorney General's report. And anyone who read that report and read it in detail knows that that took hours to read that, read that report. We're asking for a few more hours in the relative scheme of things. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Congressman John Campbell, with sorry about that, with the USA Today Network. Actually, this is for the, the speaker. Uh, in general, Speaker, you uh, you don't bring bills to the floor unless they have 76 Democratic votes. Is that the standard you're applying to this, or are you willing to, to rely on Republican votes as well? But before I answer your question, I just want to add something uh, to the previous question uh, uh, answered to um, asked by CNN. Uh, and this idea of, of buying the governor more time, I think the, 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 the more reaching thing that I want people to take away from this is the fact that I've clearly stated the assembly uh, majority has no confidence in the governor's ability to continue in office. So uh, this idea that the assembly going through its process somehow is going to allow the governor to you know, figure something out on this, I would disagree with that, uh, that assessment uh, altogether. Now, John, answer, ask your question again. I'm sorry. Uh, usually, you need 76 Democratic votes before you bring something to the floor. Is that the standard you're applying to this as well? Uh, not necessarily. I'm, I'm looking at the. Sentence. You've been listening to New York State lawmakers discussing the impeachment investigation into New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. 
New York State Assembly Speaker Carl Heasty says this is the first time in more than 100 years state lawmakers have initiated an impeachment investigation into a governor. Charles Levine, chair of the State Judiciary Committee, says the committee's investigation is being led by law firm Davis Polk, and the investigation is not only looking into the sexual harassment allegations in the attorney general's report, but also into allegations that would constitute abuse of power, such as using public funds to publish a book, the COVID-19 nursing home discrepancies and expediting COVID testing for family members. Levine says the investigation is nearing completion and he expects it to be completed in a matter of weeks, after which the Judiciary Committee will make a recommendation on whether to move forward with impeachment.